So what about, um, we don't have very much to more time, but I wanted to just get to two other topics real quick. Um, Arizona, what do you think of the whole controversy about the border and the, um, you know, the, immigra you know, the illegal immigration flowing over the border and, and how Arizona is reacting versus uh, the conflict with Obama? Have you covered that issue? Um, well, on, on immigration, I mean, I think immigration generally is beneficial for America. Mm -hmm. I think it's generally beneficial culturally and economically. However, I do think there's an issue in terms of, you know, I mean, a lot of people come legally, they wait in line, and then you have people who come illegally and kind of jump the queue. You also have the problem that the border states bear a, a unique burden because of, especially federal requirements, providing medical services and education. So I think a state like Arizona, I understand why they're upset. You know, mm -hmm. their feeling is the federal government isn't doing its job. Mm -hmm. The federal government is not, you know, protecting the border and kind of have a regularizing process in. Uh, you know, so I think the Obama administration, you know, I mean, there's some questions about whether the uh, Arizona law, I think, is the best approach. Nevertheless, I think the you know, Obama administration has to acknowledge why Arizona is reacting the way it is. They perceive federal failure. I'd like to see reform that allows more legal immigration but tries to regularize the process and reduce the amount of illegal. And I think we need to emphasize who we want to bring in, economically productive people. There are things that I think that we should do as part of a reform process. And I think that, you know, the people in Arizona, I mean, I understand where they're coming from. It may not be what I would have wanted to do, but you can understand why they're upset. Oh, sure, right. Um, in Hawaii, we have a situation where we have the Compact Free yes. Association, yes. and so we have a lot of people coming legally, very legally, from Micronesia, right. and they get the social services here, and I think it's, uh, they take 1% of the population and 20% to 30% of the resources in social, public it's, it's, resources. It's the problem of a welfare state. It's very hard to have right. open borders when you have a welfare state. Right, right. So what about the role of the Tea Party in the future? What do you see that, uh, how, how much of an impact do you think they made on this election and, and how, what do you see them happening with them in the future? Well, they mattered a lot on, in this election. I mean, they clearly provided a lot of the energy and enthusiasm that helped elect a lot of Republicans to the House of Representatives. You know, there's an argument that on the Senate side, they may have cost the Republicans a couple of seats in terms of the candidates who were chosen in the primary weren't as good you know, candidates, it turns out, for the general election. But what I think what's very important about the Tea Party is it's citizen-led, that this is really a popular uprising. And I think there are some questions whether they understand how serious financial cuts are that have to be made. I mean, do they, do they understand that, this, that we have to talk about Social Security and Medicare? You know, these are issues that I think you know, the Tea Party is going to have to struggle with. But I like the fact that this is not top-down. And as much as the Republican Party would love to take control of it, it won't be able to do so. So I'm hopeful for the long term that if the activism can be maintained, whether you call it Tea Party, whether it takes some other form, the only way we're going to solve our problems is to have people organizing at the grassroots demanding change. You know, that's one of my messages to people I talk to here. People in Washington will make decisions with or without your input. You better give them your input. They're happy not to have it. You need to make sure they understand what you want. So you see the Tea Party is continuing throughout the country? Yes. And now the challenge is can they maintain that enthusiasm in the next two years? Mm -hmm. If they do so, we could see a transformation of the political environment. All right. Well, we know where we can find your writing on Cato.org. Yes. And I want to thank Doug Bondo for coming on today. And make sure to check out his uh, essays and see him on all the major networks. Thank you for joining us today. This has been News Behind the News. Aloha.